That's the president of the Republic, Nana Dodankwe Kufado, yesterday in Kofodia, where the 67th independence anniversary happened. But we do know that a big announcement is upon us today, and uh, we'll get shortly into the quarters of the former president of the Republic, the NDC's flag bearer, going into the 2024 elections, H.E. John Dramani Mahama. <laughs> We have a press release from Cantonments Accra on March 7, 2024. That's today for immediate release. The leader and flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, John Dramani Mahama, is set to meet with the party's National Executive Committee today to submit his nomination for running mate in accordance with the NDC's constitution. Earlier this morning, Mr. Mahama will present his nominee to the Council of Elders. Today's uh, event marks a critical step in the party's preparation for the upcoming general elections. The NDC constitution requires the party's presidential elections to nominate a running mate in consultation with the National Executive Committee and the National Council of Elders. Mahama and the NDC are dedicated to building a formidable team that will work tirelessly to advance the interest of the Ghanaian people and reset the country on a path towards recovery and a prosperous future. Selecting a running mate is an important decision and John Mahama is confident his nominee embodies the values and vision of the NDC and will contribute to a successful electoral campaign. As leader of the NDC, Mr. Mahama remains committed to representing the interest of all Ghanaians and building the Ghana we want together. For media inquiries and additional information, uh, the names have been put there. One, uh, who, who is uh, the special aide to John Romani Mahama, Joyce Bar Mukhtari, former Deputy Minister for Transport, joins us on the phone line. Good morning, Council. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, good morning, Johnny. How are you? And happy Independence Day. Great. Happy 67th anniversary to each and every one of us. Absolutely. I am greater than Accra. Um, the, the flag bearer of your party is expected to make this big announcement anytime soon. Names have come up and gone. Do we know whose name he's presenting to the Council of Elders? In a few hours. The day is suddenly upon us, and I believe that Mr. Mahama is actually meeting with the party's Council of Elders this morning. That meeting will be taking place a few hours from now at the residence of our venerable elder, al Haji Mahama Idrisu, where normally the Council of Elders actually hold their meetings. Subsequently, there will be a meeting with the party's National Executive Committee that is expected to be mm. at 2 p.m. So by 3 p.m., certainly each and every one of us will be apprised. Mm. and giving an update on who exactly John Mahama will be running with in the upcoming election. Will it be a male or a female? That's what the masses are asking. That Will it be uh, a repetition of the John and Jane ticket? Will it be uh, another male qualified so to, to say within the party? What is it going to be? Johnny, let me say, for example, for now, that it will be an excellent choice. It will be a choice made for the good people of Ghana. It will be a choice that will satisfy and please each and every one of us, and it will be pleasing unto the Lord. It will certainly be a choice also for a fantastic ticket running into the 2024 election. And remember, there's only one thing that Ghanaians expect now. Ghanaians want a safe pair of hands. Ghanaians want a unifier. Ghanaians want someone who will be nationalistic and patriotic a modest, affable, and committed and dedicated Ghanaian, first and foremost. I think that is what we are looking forward to. So I, for one, mm. will be looking forward to a safe pair of arms. An experienced person, right. a person whose credentials are not in doubt, whose credibility is not in doubt, mm. a person who will be honest and committed to the cause and well-being of the good people of Ghana. And I expect mm. nothing less than that. There have also been concerns that, well, if you look at the tables, 
John Romani Mahama only gets to contest this time round, and if he wins, he has only one term. The NDC will continue uh, in its quest to stay in power, just as much as the NPP also uh, desires. And then the conversation is that you need a marketable candidate, somebody who is young and strong to be able to take over the mantle or the baton from John Romani Mahama. What do you say to that? My brother and friend, the race is for the what? It's not it's for not the, the swift. Exactly. Mm. You understand? And the times and exigencies of the day will always determine for us the leaders that we need, the leaders that we expect, the leaders that Ghana actually deserves. I have no doubt in my mind that right now what we need is the leader who will take us out of the current doldrums a leader who would actually work very hard to ameliorate and reduce corruption, a leader who will build for us a Ghana where we are all proud citizens, patriotic citizens. 67 years after independence, you'll be expecting that any individual will be preparing to receive their citizen's card because at 70, you are expected that you'll be taking your very well-earned rest. Right. Indeed, what we are looking forward to is that Ghana needs a reset button. I expect the boss, John Mahama, to pick an individual who will help him ably, mm. competently, and well-deservedly to deliver on his mandate for the good people of Ghana. I think that for the present moment, what we need genuinely is first peace of mind, commitment, right. loyalty to Ghana, mm. and above all, persons who will handle our affairs and steer our affairs in a way that all of us will be enormously proud of. Look, make no mistake. Mm -hmm. Ghana is actually at a crossroads. And I'm sure you can tell from President Akufuado's posturing, his body language, even his speeches. Look at the tone of his speech, even at Independence yesterday. Look at the outlook, look at the output. You could tell that there's energy and zeal that usually accompanies the participants at the program was totally absent. We need something different, something safe, something that is experienced something that is tried and tested. We also require persons who will be modest. I don't expect Mr. Mahama to nominate a running mate who will be expecting a 10 vehicle convoy. I don't expect him to nominate a running mate who will be expecting 10, 20 security men running in and around their vehicles. I don't expect Mr. Mahama to nominate an individual who has no idea what Ghanaians require or what we deserve, or a person who is coming to partner him only for the personal mm. interest or self-interest mm. about, you know, uh, future issues that probably are nowhere in sight now. Right. But now we need somebody who will help us and Mahama build the Ghana with one. Johnny, you have followed mm. events over the years. Right. I'm sure you've lived through all of it. Mm. Just shut your eyes for a minute and imagine that we could even reduce corruption by 70%, by 50%. Look at the monies expended on the National Cathedral, for example. Can you imagine that each constituency had received just one million, one million of the over $50 million expended on that wasteful endeavor. Think about it. Even God will be pleased with a leader who will be equitable and fair and just in the eyes of our society. I think that is what we are looking for. So I have no doubt in my mind. You know, Mr. Mahama is a man of history, and I know that he will want to leave a legacy of great leadership of solid leadership, of genuine leadership, of a passionate leadership, a group that will wake up on Monday morning and know that time no day, let's get to work. That is what we are expecting. I see. So I have no doubt in my mind that mm. whoever is announced in the next few hours, you and I will be enormously proud of. Look, I love to look at leaders in whom I have trust. I love to have leaders who are sincere and honest. And you know, when I sit with the Mahama and I have these very personal conversations, I, I love his thought strength. I like the things that he thinks about, the things that he says. And you see, one good thing is that all of us here will be holding these leaders accountable. Right. We don't want situations where they're going to make promises and come back the next day to give you excuses. We're going to make promises tomorrow and come... No! So imagine leaders who can check with one another. That alone mm. is enough. So let's hope mm. that we'll receive a very credible nominee, a respectable nominee, a patriotic nominee, a nationalistic nominee, one who is a safe pair of hands that all of us can trust. 
and I'm looking forward to that announcement. In the next few hours, right. the cast will certainly be out of the bag, mm. and all of us will be well apprised of issues going forward. But certainly, make no mistake, that will be a pair that you yourself will be proud of. Above all, immediately after that announcement, we'll be continuing with the building, the Ghana we want tour, and the next train stops at the Upper West region. So mm. we are a very, very busy group of people, and I love the, the party song that you just played. You know, it mm. gives me enormous hope. It gives me hope that there's something new on the horizon. It gives me hope that we will eventually get the change that we all deserve. Because I have no doubt, Ghana mm. deserves change. And that change must come in December 2024. Is... H.E. John Dramani Mahama under some form of pressure from big wigs within the party to make a certain choice? You know, look, there will sometimes be some level of pressure. There's some lobbying going on. Naturally, there will be various schools of thought. But all the party elders, now you know that I interact with almost all of our party elders. In fact, right. like Mama Idris is a man, I consider my very personal godfather. Mm. He stood in for me since our father died over 25 years ago. And his wife, Betty, is someone that I consider as a very important mentor in my life. And so I have no doubt in my mind that they had any extreme reason or considerations, for example. We will all know. And I know Mr. Mahama has been having these very good conversations with the revered Obeda Samoa, with our Professor Kwame Nankal, Atua Hoy, and all these party elders that we all know, and various groups in and around the party. But you see, naturally, until that nominee is unveiled, certainly you cannot stop people from going around and lobbying and asking questions and wanting to be a part of it. It tells you the NDC is a very, very attractive party. People within the party are very enthusiastic. Don't forget that even Mr. Mahama had people contesting him for the role of flag bearer. That's so right. naturally, mm. there's enormous ambition, there's enormous energy, there's very positive individuals, there's many people with very good leadership qualities. Of course, to be a nominee at this time of a party whose future is at hand mm. would naturally be something that resonates with a lot of people. So I have no doubt in my mind that there will be a lot of lobbying going on. And of course, if you want to lobby Mr. Mahama, you know not to knock on Mr. Mahama's door. Who will you be lobbying? You'll be lobbying the party elders. Right. You'll be lobbying the executive. You know what I mean. Members of parliament, because those are the real caucuses that come together to make up their minds about these choices that usually we make in accordance with the party's constitution. But make no mistake, mm -hmm. when Mr. Mahama finally makes that announcement, all I ask the good people of Ghana is to give us your prayers, to give us your support, and to support the candidate, the nominee in particular, you understand? Help them to stand tall, help them to stand firm, above them, give them the support they require. It will certainly not be a nominee who would come with a string of life, a hymn book of stories and spin and span all sorts of yarns for you, certainly not. 67 years after independence. I think that our idea of leadership also must change. It must now revolve around doers. People who mean what they say. People who have represented a certain positive vibe that all of us can relate to. Individuals who have what it takes to lead this country in all modesty, in all humility. Mm. And persons who will not necessarily talk down to you as though you have no mind of your own. You understand? And look, you who are actually in this fight against corruption mm -hmm. should be looking out for individuals. Individuals who would come to the table with enormous credibility. People we can all vouch for. That is what we are looking for. I mean, Mr. Mahama has been in this country for the last seven or so years. Right. Have you heard, have you seen mm. of all the unimaginable lies that were told? And now we all know that all these lies only came about because some people wanted power and wanted it better. Not because they're going to come and do anything better. And we've seen their work. So please, help me, help us, help everybody support the ticket as soon as that nominee is announced. Let's all get mm. to work now and work hard to improve the lot of the good people of Ghana. That is really what we are I see. Council, so we do know that now the position of the vice president, whether we like it or not, has become the reserve of the chairman of the economic management team. At least that's the practice since 1992, if you so wish. Um, and now people are beginning to ask questions. Okay, so 
if H. E. John Dramani Mahama decides to settle on Professor Nana Jinopo Kwajiman, she is a full professor of literature, former minister for education, former vice chancellor of the University of Cape Coast. Of course, the issues of corruption and the integrity, uh, you know, uh, check that that will be run on her as of the last election, you know, went blank. Nobody could taint her with anything. But then she doesn't come to the table, for want of uh, a better expression, and correct me if I'm wrong, with any economic prowess. Now, Ghanaians would expect that the head of the economic management team, looking at where our economy is presently and how we want to spring out of it into a better place, you would need somebody who has economic forte to be able to do that for us. How do you respond to that concern? That is if H.E. John Dramani Mahama has settled on Professor Nana Jinopo Kwajiman. My brother, let me say this without any fear of contradiction. When you nominate a person to any role, you don't need to define to them what hardship means. You don't need to define to them what hunger means. You don't need to define to them what building an equitable and just society means. You don't need to define to them what people actually require at this time. Above all, you have a completely failed and yet in the past a celebrated economist who has failed to deliver on any of the key parameters that you and I or any other Ghanaian was expecting. How have we fared in the hands of our pseudo-economic whiskey, the man who was described as the most competent for Ghana at any given time, the man we were told would take us to the promised land, the man we were told had a magic wand and that you wake up in the morning and immediately all of our hatches will vanish. My brother, on every perception index. Our poverty has gotten worse. Corruption has gotten worse. The economy certainly is not faring any better with inflation at 23 plus percent. Indeed, interest rates have not gone down. The dollar certainly is looking at going up to about 13 cities to the CD. Think about to the dollar. So to be very honest with you, I would always say one thing. But we've seen many other vice presidents who were not necessarily economists. Mm. Think back. Professor Mills was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the late Ali Umahama was a businessman. I think he studied survey or something from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology at the time. Right. He was no economist, you mm. understand. Mm. You know, let's look for leaders who understand the agency of the day. Leaders who understand what the good people require. And leaders who appreciate better that if we are able to fight all of these atrocities that have become a part of our governance system, if we can build a good society, an honest society, an ethical society, infusing into people the ethos that make us patriotic citizens, that example alone will trigger down and dovetail beautifully into any economic management team that you require. If you wake up in the morning, for example, and you can see that people are honest, they are doing a good day's job, they are honest like you guys do in your, your media houses where you work very hard on transparent processes, on accountable processes. Mm. Think about it. If any leader can hold us accountable, demand that we do right, demand that we improve productivity, above all, ensure we have a system that is devoid of corruption and corruptibility. Think about it. That is all that you require to manage a better economy, mm. to improve the economy, mm. to improve a good feeling, a feel of a, a feel good factor amongst each and every one of us. Look, our constitution is very, very clear. In the directive principles of state policy, what do we need? We need trustees, custodians of our constitution, repositories of understanding for what the people require. So I expect nothing less than an individual who has proven management skills. That is what is important. Right. An individual who understands what the good people of Ghana require. Thirdly, a safe pair of hands. Look, think about the cost of government machinery alone. So remember that modesty is a key requirement. And please, let's be careful that we no longer go out there looking for leaders who represent themselves to us. And then we follow them and do so at our own peril as we've all come to experience. I don't want to lay, you know, whatever's at anybody's uh, table mm. this morning. But let's right. be honest. We want sincere leaders, mm. genuine leaders, honest leaders. When your leader speaks and tells you something, oh, I'll be there at 8 p.m., you know the leader will be there. 
oh, don't worry, we're working on this. You know, they are working on it. No leader should come into office as a proven citizen of great qualities, of proven leadership skill, and come into office to tell you lies and give you unproven theories. Today, I remember with respect the late Bakwe C. Misasa when he told us to forget textbook economics because practicing the real economics of a budget balance and deficit in Ghana is a whole new level of competence. Now we all understand and we appreciate those words better. So let's be very, very sincere in our minds that we've had situations, historical situations, successful pairs and tickets where the individuals who partnered the leader were not necessarily economists. Mm. But because you had strong expertise available to manage the economy, to work for the interest of the good people of Ghana. Remember that one of Ghana's most successful finance ministers was actually a lawyer. Right. The late mm. Kwesi Botri. Mm. So we've had many of these people, people of proven integrity, right. persons who were described as capable hands. Mm. Today, what we require is a ticket that will be dedicated to capable hands, experienced hands, persons who have proven track record. Mm. Individuals that all of us can relate to and support. And look, I want us to have leaders who are listening. That is actually very important. Mm. Now we no longer even have media engagement with any of the current leaders. What has changed? They rode on the back of media hype to get mm. into office. Suddenly they don't want to open themselves to the scrutiny that is required. Indeed, scrutiny also builds accountability and transparency into our leaders. Mm. And let's expect a nominee who will be available to the media, available to the good people of Ghana, above all, hold themselves in readiness for accountability. Thank you very much, Joyce. Power Mukhtari, special aid to John Dramani Mahama, who will make that big announcement today. Thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us this morning. We appreciate it and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, sir. And please, I'll be hoping and counting on your support as we go along on this journey. Thank you very Thank much. You. And may God bless each and everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, Helen. Hmm. Yes, Johnny. Jo John and Jane. John and Jane. Uh, I think Joyce was trying to be a bit cryptic. Mm. She didn't want to give it away. She said the person who will be uh, chosen will have such and such qualities because mm. the announcement should be made, what, well, today, isn't it? At That's some right. point That's right. uh, today. But it almost seems as though the cat has been let out of the bag. We know almost <laughs> that we're going to have <laughs> an announcement of Prof. Prof. Jane Prof. Nana. Prof. Prof. Nana Jane. She likes Prof. Nana Jane. Nana Jane. Nana Jane. She's a full professor of literature. She's 72 years old, born on November 22, 1951. Um, her political achievements include the first running mate, female running mate of the two major political parties in Ghana. That's the NDC and the MPP. She also was selected as the presidential running mate for the National Democratic Congress, NDC, on July 6, 2020, for Ghana's December 2020 general elections. She is the first female vice chancellor of the University of Cape Coast and also the chancellor of the uh, Women's University in Africa. Uh, she's previously held the position of education minister under whom uh, Samuel Lukujetua Blackwa had served. Plus, you know, of course, she, she continues to be a mentor to many young women and to many women, both in acad academia and industry and, and all of that. Well, we'll get into some more detail because yesterday the uh, NDC MP for uh, North Tong, Samuel Lukujetua Blackwa, and uh, the MP for Ningu Pram Pram, the MP for Hododo Edijo, uh, Sami Jane Fee, the MP for um, Isu Jaman, um, the MP for Ketu South, Jifago Mashi, Thomas Ampemnyakon, uh, and Nestonogbe of Ashaman. And